in the name of Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the one God to whom we forever give thanks and praise for raising up in our midst the black man and black woman of America, a divine leader, a divine teacher, and a divine guide in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, the Messiah, the resurrected, and the exalted Christ. We forever thank Almighty God Allah for coming as it was written and prophesied that he would come, seeking that which was lost. And we can find no other people fitting the description of the lost brother, the lost sister, the lost sheep, except we, the 50 million or more mentally dead black men and women here in the hills of North America. And so we thank Almighty God, Allah. We thank the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, his Messiah. Right. But if I live to be a thousand, if I live to be the ripe old age of Methuselah, I will forever and eternally be grateful to Almighty God, Allah, and the honorable, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for finding one among us worthy of both of them putting their spirit in that one. For anointing one and appointing one for this very critical and crucial hour in which we have now arrived. I speak of none other than the spiritual son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That one who is the minor messenger to the major messenger in our midst. That one who is the subordinate to the senior in our midst. That one who is the fulfiller of the promise, who is making the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad his bond. I speak of none other than our minister and our servant, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's minister in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. As I greet you, my beloved and beautiful black sisters and brothers, with the greeting words of peace, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I am honored to be here today with the Western Regional Minister, Minister Wazir Muhammad, and the minister here at Mosque Number 12, working and assisting him, Minister Charles Muhammad, the laboring staff, and all of you who are here in the Los Angeles and surrounding area. I bring you greetings from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who sends you his greetings of love and unity and solidarity and says to let you know that you are constantly on his mind and in his prayers. My subject today is the white man is still the devil. Make no mistake about it, the white man is still the devil. remind yourself. I say it to myself at least once every day. I attempt to remind myself to remind myself so that I will remember to remember just so I won't forget. But it's one thing to call the white man the devil. It's another thing to prove that the white man is the devil. Now let's stop for a minute. Ain't nothing I'm going to say up here today that can prove to you that the white man is the devil. Hell, if all that he has done to us in all this time has it already proven to you he's the devil. Just sit back, cool it, just chill. Don't worry about it. 
everything would be all right. But I must cover a lot of ground today. From the supreme wisdom, lesson number two, question and answer number 21, and I will roll through them. Who was the founder of other like attracts and like repair? Answer, an original man who was a specialist by the, who was a scientist by the name of Yaku, a scientist born 20 miles from the holy city Mecca in the year 8,400. Lesson number two, question and answer number 22. How old was the founder? Yaku was six years old. While playing with two pieces of steel, he discovered one piece had magnetic in it and the other piece did not. Right. Then he learned that the piece with magnetic attracted the piece that did not have magnetic in it. Then he told his people that when he was old enough, he would make a nation that would be unalike. And he would teach them technology and they would rule for 6,000 years. Now let's stop a minute. In the book of Genesis, it talks about Adam and Eve. Now, I know the church has gotten a little mixed up now. They deal with Adam and Steve sometimes. They want to say it, honey. But they say they got no Adam and Steve, honey. The book said Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And in the book of Genesis, we have been led by white Christianity to believe that Adam and Eve is the beginning of the human family of the planet Earth. But not so, teaches the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis is the making of the white race. That's right. I sure wish I had a black boy and some white chalk. <laughs> Maybe we can look for one. Seems like everything white is running out there. <laughs> we can't get white chalk, we'll use yellow chalk. Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, in what is called the Garden of Eden. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teach us that when we look at the book of Genesis, it tells us that in the beginning, darkness, blackness, covered the earth. The earth was in triple blackness, in triple darkness. And as we look at it, it goes on to tell us, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. It goes on to say that he separated the waters from the firmament. He separated the heavens from the earth that God willed it into existence. We know from our ancient study, as we study the ancient teachings of that old ancient black man and woman from what is called Africa today, or from ancient Egypt, called Egypt by the white man, but called Kemet by the ancient black people of our foremothers and forefathers. We find that the God Ptah, that the God Ptah, through authoritative utterance, will the creation into existence. The Holy Quran says that he said, Kum paya kum. Be, and it is. He willed it into existence. It tells us in Genesis, from 1 through 25, that God had no problem willing the sun into existence. 853,000 miles in diameter. 2,679,785 miles in circumference burning at the terrific heat of 14,072 degrees Fahrenheit. But God said, Kum Payakum. God said, Be, and it is. Willed it into existence. No problem. Now you know making a sign is hard. But now you get down to Genesis 1 and 26, and it says, And God said, Let us make men in our image. And after our life, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing that crawls upon the earth. This man that is being made in Genesis is not a created man, but a what kind of man? Yeah. What kind of man? Yeah. A made man. The man and woman called Adam and Eve in Genesis, we don't read where God created Adam. We don't read where God created Eve. We read where he created everything else, but he made Adam and he made Eve. What is the difference between that 
truth. Teaches us that that which is created and that which is willed into existence from nothing. But that which is made has to follow a pattern of something that is already here. So this man in Genesis is a made man. Now what does the Holy Quran have to say about that? Let's go to the Holy Quran. But the Holy Quran teaches us of a man that is made in the Holy Quran, the 15th chapter, the 26th through the 40th verse. Let's take a look here. And surely we created man of sounding clay, of black mud, fashioned into shape. What does the Quran say he's made of? White mud? Red mud? Yellow mud? What kind of mud? You scared to say black? I know some of you scared to say black. You've gotten so used to saying minority. You're so used to saying African American. Before the evening is over, we'll show you you're not no damn African American. You are not an American. You have never been an American, and you will never be an American. You can take a poison white cake all you want to and try to put chocolate icing on top to make the cake more palatable. But I'm telling you, you're not an American. From the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, hopefully we'll get to touch on that. And surely we created man of sounding clay, of black mud fashioned into shape. And the devil, the jinn, we created of an intensely hot fire. And when thy Lord said to the angel, who is the Lord talking to? I am going to create a mortal of sounding clay. I am going to create a man of black mud fashioned into shape. And so God says to the angel, and so when I have made this man of black mud and breathed my spirit in him, whose spirit is going to be in this man that's made from black mud? God's spirit. He says to the angels, I want you to fall down and make obeisance to him. Fall down. Fall down before this black man that is made from black mud and fashioned into shape. The Quran teaches us that all of the angels were willing to obey God's command, except one called Iblis. Iblis said that he would not bow down to this man that God had made. Now this man that God had made, we have already established, was a black man, a black woman, from black mud, fashioned into shape. This, as we study, where's our chart? <laughs> Genesis 1 and 26 says, let us do what? Make man, Make man in what? Our, our image and after what? Our, our, our likeness. Right. Singular word or plural word? Plural. Singular word or plural word? Plural. Singular word or plural word? Us and our and our. Some us is making a man in the book of Genesis. Come on. And we are making this man after our image and after our life. Right. And then it says, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing that crawls upon the earth. Six days with this new man in the book of Genesis have to rule. But 2 Peter 3 and 8, Peter said to him, Be not ignorant of this one thing, for one day in this instance equals a thousand years, and a thousand years equals one day. 2 Peter 3 and 8, write them down so you can go home and check them out. And when you go back to church next Sunday, you can ask Reverend Pitchford about it. <laughs> ask Reverend Pitchford about it. Ask Reverend Hog Maw with the chitlin' juice running down his jaw. Ask him about it. Come on. Six days, according to the Bible, in this instance, represents 6,000 what? Yeah. 6,000 years. This Adam makes people would rule. When we study. 
today we find that there is what is called the pre-Adamites. The what? The pre-Adamites. Pre means what? So if history teaches us of the pre-Adamites, that means that there were some people here before who? How else could you get an us involved in this work? How else could some hour be making an image? And how else could they be making it an hour image? And after hour life? He said, well, I can't buy that. There was supposed to be Cain, Adam and Eve, and they had Cain and Abel, is that right? Cain killed his brother Abel, according to the story, is that right? So that left Adam and Eve and Cain, is that right? But it says that Cain was put out of the garden and driven into the unfinished part of the earth, and he went into the land of Nod and did what? Got him a wife. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If there was only supposed to be Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and Cain killed Abel, how did Cain go into the land of Nod and find a wife? of the 
planet Earth. Oh, yeah. That's you. That's me. But you have lost the knowledge of yourself. Right. You have been robbed of a knowledge of yourself. And now you try to out devil the devil. You try to out fight, fight for them. Ask you your name at the door. And you fix them big, thick, pretty African lips. All to the boy. You look at this boy. Your home. Right. So we, 
Come on. Right wing. Right. Africa is your throne. Your home is 196 million nine hundred forty thousand.
to the rest of the world. Right. Long before there was a white Christianity, long before there was what was called Islam or Judaism in the nature of the black man and black woman, we believed in a system called Maya. Truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, order, balance, and reciprocity. When it comes from the nature of the black woman and the black man, Islam comes from your nature. Islam is your picture. Islam is the nature in which God created the black man and the black woman. It's not the nature in which he created the white man and the white woman. White people run from Islam. Yes, they do. We stayed in Spain over 700 to 800 years and couldn't convert the white devil in Spain. Couldn't convert it. It's against the white man's nature. So we are not just touching that. African, though it is all right to use that until we can do better. You say, well, what are we? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, they teach us that we are the original Asiatic black man and woman. Why Asiatic? We're not talking about some little continent called Asia. We're not that sick, and we are localizing ourselves and limiting ourselves to a little continent. But at one time, the whole earth was called Asia. North Asia, South Asia, East Asia, West Asia. The white man is always telling you about Asia Minor. Hell, when you gonna ask him about Asia Major? <laughs> Don't even to ask him about Asia Major. Asia, Ma Asia Major is the whole thing. And you are the people of the whole thing. You notice the white man doesn't call himself a native anywhere in the world. Get ready for this. <laughs> There's a people in European history, history before Europe was called Europe, who are called the Grimaldi. And the Grimaldis are the ancient original inhabitants and natives of that area that they call Europe today. The white man ain't even a native in Europe. We were in Europe before the white man. He's a Johnny come lately who just got here. Six days ago, 6,000 years ago, and approximately 600. He's the Adamite people that are made in the book of Genesis, and in the beginning, blackness covered the earth. You're right, for nothing here but black people, and we covered the whole earth. That's what the Bible is talking about. So the white man is a grafted man. Through a process of sex, birth control, and genetic uh, engineering, sex, birth control, and genetic engineering, the white man is a grafted albino mutant. He talks about Afrobanoid, Caucasoid, Mongoloid. He's a mutant. <laughs>
the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teach us as we look at this whole matter of devil <coughs> say what was the idea of making devil? Lesson number two, question and answer 24. It was predicted of him, Yaku, that he would make devil 8,400 years before he was born. So he was born with the determined idea to make a people to rule for 6,000 years. How long did it take him to make them? 600 years he was in the grafting, in grafting devil or making him from the black man. 600 years to graft the white man out of the black man. You say, wait a minute. I can't, I, I, I can't go for that. 600 years? What do you mean to graft the white man? Well, you don't know how white folks got here. How are you going to argue with that? You don't even know how you got here. How could you possibly argue with it? 200 years to graft the brown out of the black by allowing only the lighter ones to marry, discouraging the darker ones. 200 years to get the brown out of the black. I got to teach this. Then you get the brown. Yakub discovered that in the black man and woman was two germs, dominant and recessive. Black and that which is weaker than black. 200 years allowing only the light brown ones to get together and discouraging the dark brown ones from getting together to produce the yellow race. And the same process with the light yellow ones not allowing the dark yellow ones to get together for 200 years until the white race was produced. You couldn't go any farther than that. The white race is the very bottom or base of the genetic ladder. There's nothing you can get out of the white race. You can't go up, you can't go no lower than that. Public enemy say, how low can you go? You can't go no lower than that. That's the bottom of it. That's as far as you can go. 600 years approximately 60,000 people involved. Yakub died before the ultimate making of the white race. Right. Inside of the black man and black woman was not only dominant and recessive, but the tendency toward strength and weakness. And it became necessary to isolate the weaker nature the weaker germ, I must say, of the black man and woman, don't worry about when you stop breathing the dog. <laughs> <Right. laughs> to isolate the weaker nature, drive it to its last stage until we had pr produced the white race. The white race represents the personification and manifestation of the weaker nature of the black nation. Did you hear me? Yes, they are the weakest of the genetic ladder of the human family of the planet Earth, grafted from the original black man and the original black woman. But God, in his infinite power, is able to produce a devil and not fall victim to the devil, allow the devil to have six days or 6,000 years, which is nothing, on the scale or when you graft it in the history of the black man who has no birth records, what happened to these lights? Can we get them back on? Please, we want the whole house on. 6,000 years is nothing when you scale it or graft it. Don't, don't, don't. I'm just going to give you this a little bit and I'll have something for everybody. But I've got to lay the foundation or the base for this subject. Otherwise, you just come in and get hyped and leave. And things that are going on, you won't understand. The Honorable, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teach us that the circumstances surrounding the birth or the origin of a thing 
determines the nature of that thing. Right. The circumstances surrounding the birth or the origin of a thing or how that thing comes into existence determines the nature of that thing. What people came into existence through the murder of black people, That's killing cool. the doctor and allowing the light to live. And if they came into existence through the murder of black people, then their nature is to murder black people. Some of the leading psychologists and psychiatrists of our day, Dr. Richard King, Sir. Dr. Mary Bridges, Dr. Francis Chris Wellesley, Dr. Naeem Akbar, if I didn't say it, Dr. Naeem Akbar and others, they are pointing out to us things that bear witness to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Dr. Francis Chris Wellesley, in her book, The Isis Papers, the keys to the color who is trained in studying the psyche of people. Let's see what she has to say. She says it should be made clear here that black males' genitalia, black males' genital apparatus, the male sex organ uh, of the black man, is the most feared relative to the genital apparatus of other non-white males because in possessing the greatest potential to produce melanin, which causes pigmentation and color, the pigment responsible for all true skin coloration, black males have the greatest genetic potential to destroy or annihilate the global white minorities. She goes on to say the individual and collective brain power computer Given that task of solving the global problem of white genetic survival, eventually evolved a solution in the form of a technology that would address the specific use of white genetic and genital weakness or inadequacy. Technology is always developed to take over at the point of the human organism's uh, anatomical and physiological limitation. Thus, the white brain computer printout was a weapon that would be the exact symbolic replica of the black male sex art or the male genitalia, a weapon that would take over at the point of limitation of the white male genital apparatus, an apparatus that had the very specific limitation of being able to annihilate blacks and other people of color genetics. What is she saying? She's saying that as you study, and I'm only going to touch this like this, boom. As you study white people, she said the gun is what the white man calls the equalizer. He calls the gun the equalizer, and he makes and fashions the gun to resemble the male sex organs. And he says that the trigger and the handle represents the testicles, which is the factory where life and pigmentation comes from, which has the power of wiping white people from the face of the earth because of its dominance and strength and because of his weakness and recessiveness. She said the barrel represents the rest of the male organ, and the bullets that spew from the gun represent the sperm that has the power to wipe white people from the face of the earth. So she said they have created, they have made a weapon I'm coming to Gates, I'm coming to Brother Rodney King, I'm headed there all the time. Headed there all the time. I don't know such a small diagram, but she shows you different guns and shows you what these guns look like and how these guns resemble the black male art. She says the white man has a constant fear of white genetic, uh, of black, uh, white genetic annihilation by the black man. That's why during slavery, he always cut the black man's male organ, cut the black man's organ off. Because that's his fear. He knows that that's how he came into the world. And he knows that that's how he could be destroyed. 
Very quickly. She said, look at his game. Basketball. A brown ball or a black ball. It started out with black basketballs. And a gold with white nets hanging from it that represents the blonde hair in the uh, area of the private area of the white female. The object of the game is to keep this big brown ball from getting into this hoop with the white net hanging from it. <laughs>
people on scene today that will bring Elijah Muhammad to you crystally clear and give you the scientific proof to back up everything he said.
earth may have an eraser. <laughs> the planet Earth is traveling at 1,037 and a third miles per hour. And as it is traveling at that terrific speed, it makes a complete revolution on its own axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 46 seconds. At 12 noon, you get down on your knees and look up and pray to heaven. And hell is down here. But the Earth is rotating. And at 12 midnight, what was heaven is now hell. And what was hell is now heaven. Heaven is not up and hell is not down. Heaven and hell are states of mind, states of being, states of condition. Jesus says, stop looking for heaven. 
Bible in the sky. Yes. He said the kingdom is where? Within you. But are you willing to go to work and get the kingdom out of you? Yes. The kingdom is within you. No pie in the sky. So if the kingdom is within us, then that means that and the king is sitting on the throne of his glory, then that means God must also be where? Allah came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Let me stop and deal with that a minute because the devil and those who follow the devil's way want you to believe that that's shirk, that that's making gods besides Allah, and that you are to follow the Eastern Arab way of Islam, which ain't doing a damn thing for the Arabs and Turkish that you just
including myself, trying to come with an IRS tax charge against him. You remember, that's the way they came at Jesus. When they first came at Jesus, they came at him on taxes. And Jesus was wise. Jesus said, written unto Caesar what is Caesar's and written unto God what is God. We say in point number eight, what the Muslims want, that we are not to pay the devil any tax. We don't tax the slaves, and we have no equal justice under your law. I have never paid the devil tax, and I will never pay the tax. The English cracker, the British cracker. 
He's the one who created the dispute a long time ago. He set up an, an artificial border. And this artificial border he set up, then, as lesson number one, question and answer number four, why did he run Yakub and his made devil from the root of civilization over the hot desert into the kingdom of West Asia, as they now call it Europe? It goes on to tell us, I'm going back that way, it goes on to tell us that he had come among the righteous, telling lies, accusing the righteous, and causing them to fight and kill one another. So the British came in, drew up artificial borders, same thing they did in Africa. They had an access. Yes, they did. 14 to 16 white European nations met, and like gangsters, they divided up the territory of Africa. The French took one section, the English took another section, the Portuguese and the white Spanish from Southern Europe, not our Chicano brother and sister, that's not who we're talking about, but the Spanish devil from Europe, they all divided up Africa. They took out their compass and their T-square and their ruler and all of that, and they drew up the shapes of the borders and boundaries of Africa, African nations. They call this nation by this name, that nation by that name, and another African nation by that name. Then they set up a flag system. Then they set up a passport system for each African nation and a visa system for each African nation. The white man did that. Right. We didn't have the division in the territorial disputes that we have today in Africa. That's right. But one took the Gold Coast. One took where the oil was. One took where the human resources the riches. And like gangsters on the turf, they say, you don't come into my territory, and I won't come into yours. That's, right. That's what they did in Kuwait. That's right. And Saddam Hussein has been asking for an outlet to the water for all these years, even the leader before Saddam Hussein was asking. But some of you are so sick, you don't realize that the white man is in there. He pumped you on the television day and night, programming your thinking until you started hating Saddam Hussein. You, some of you sitting in this audience, down in the uniform when a white man is saluting his flag, and some of you went to the Persian Gulf to kill other people over there who hadn't done a damn thing to you. Now the original owner of this nation is selling 
Parkinson's and blankets on a reservation. How did the cracker get Texas? Did he take Texas from the Mexicans? Invade the territory, set up a new border and a new boundary, ripped off the big state and made it his own. Daniel Boone is David Crockett and these other crackers. Is that the history of America? How did he get New Mexico? How did he get Arizona? How did he get California? Talk back to me. I mean, talk back to me. How did he get it? Stolen. What about Grenada? Didn't he go into Grenada and destroy the new jewel movement of Brother Maurice Bishop? Murdered Brother Maurice Bishop, our black brother. Killed our people in the streets and troops stopped on the ground of Grenada. Invaded Grenada took Grenada and put it in the hands of a puppet government that white America could control. Don't tell me nothing about no damn invasion and aggression. Aggression. Yeah. What about Panama? Did the cracker aggress on Panama? Didn't he invade Panama? Didn't he go in and kill thousands of the black mestizo people of Panama?
He doesn't come with anything foreign. Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him, knowing the wickedness and the racism of the Arab. I've been to Mecca by God's grace seven times. I saw racism in Mecca. I saw ghettos in Mecca. I saw them mistreat black people in Mecca. The so-called Arab. That's not the true Arab. You are the true Arab. The so-called Jew. That's not the true Jew or Hebrew. You are the true Jew or Hebrew. The Bible and the true Arab of the Holy Quran. The original Arab and the original Jew have been driven from the centers of power. These are a, a people from the north that came in and took over the area. I'll be finished in a minute. I just cut it. Look, I don't know when I'll be black. I mean black. <laughs> And the minister, we don't know when he'll be back out this way. So hold on for a few minutes. Where you going anyway? You're busted upside the head by a Billy Club when you get outside. And be on TV if you're lucky. Some Korean shoots you in the back of the head, sister, because you don't have a black man who will stand up for you. Is that what you want to do? It happened in New York, in Brooklyn. On flat, uh, in Flatbush, and you had the group Black Watch, who I love. That's an ex <laughs> overseer, Brother Jay Funker Lester, Super Shaft, Paradise Architect. I love him, but as I hear him talk about Van Lords, <laughs> protect no justice, no peace. We don't want that. We shall all be free. Them Koreans beat that Haitian black sister in the store. And black watch women marched and picketed in front of the store. Ain't no time for no picketing. If you're going to do anything, you take the picket sign and drag the Koreans behind her in the street. Good rap, like you've been to a feel-good concert, and you're 
go back out and be the same nigga that you were. You go back to your dope and your coke and your smoke. You go back, some of you, to pimp in the black woman. You're not a pimp, you're a cop. Shake 
but they kiss the black stone. They fight and wrestle and tussle just to kiss it or point to it and say, Allah, who that But they gather 49 stones in the valley of Muzdalifah to stone the white ones and kill the devil, kill Shaitan. We didn't set it up that way. Why do they stone the white and call it the devil in Mecca and kiss the black and hold it in the highest regard? You got to ask yourself these questions. Why is the ancient house called Kaaba, brick and stone, a sign today? But why do the ancient Africans in Egypt talk about the Kaaba representing the spirit and the soul of the human body? Ra Mata. Study the Mithunetta and the hieroglyphics. You'll find the Ka and the Ba. You'll find Ramata. You'll find it all. Bilal, the ancient Ethiopian African slave. Bilal had never met Prophet Muhammad. I got to come. Go ahead. He had never met Prophet Muhammad. He was a slave under the white so-called Arabs. He had never met Muhammad. And Bilal believed in the one God because it was coming up out of the genetic memory bank. Because all over Africa, we always believed in one I don't care what name we call him by, still one guy. Nakunpo, Velinko, Kunkulu, Pata, Ra, Amin Ra, Oshun, Ogun, Ilegba, Papaluaye, Oludumare, Ileda, Olufun. All of them, we believe in the one God. Go ahead, Always one you say, no, you don't believe in one God. In Africa, they believe in animism, and, and they believe it. We can say that about you if we were ignorant. The white Africans. But we understand Islam. You say that Allah has 99 attributes, and that Allah is his 100 attributes. Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim, Al-Hakim, al mumi We can say, well, that's 99 different gods, and Allah is the 100th God, but we know better than this. We understand what that means. Those are different manifestations of the same one God. That's, right. That's the same way it is among the African. Right. These are different manifestations. The nectar system, which is where the term nature comes from. Different manifestations of the same one God. Right. Christians say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We can say you believe in three gods. But the only lie that Muhammad has given us the key to that. We understand that that's three different manifestations of the same God. We do properly understand, but most of you think you got three gods. But the African believe in one God. The Lamb had never met Prophet He was a slave, and he believed in the one God. Somalia, his white slave master, would beat him and drag him in the noonday sun and put boulders on his chest and try to make him accept the 300 and some gods in the Kaaba. But Bilal would always say, Ahadu, Ahadu, one God, one God. Where did he get this from? Came up out of his genetic memory, man. It's in the nature of the black woman and the black man, all right? Yes, they went to the Nabi, the prophet, may peace be upon him. They said, the apostle, there's a black Abyssinian or Ethiopian slave who believes in the one God. Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, sent, I believe it was Abu Bakr, to buy his freedom and to bring Bilal back. Now let's go a little step further, is that all right? Yes, then he started praying and calling the faithful to prayer in a unique way that Prophet Muhammad had never heard. Right. Prophet Muhammad didn't know nothing about it. May peace be upon Prophet Muhammad, and it takes nothing from the Holy Prophet because he is the one to whom the Holy Quran was revealed. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan are the ones through whom the Holy Quran is to be fulfilled. Yes, sir. Right. You with me? Yes, sir. We're talking black enough? Yes, sir. Very black. Yeah. Our brother came from. Um, came from an uh, exclave, he said, black, very black. <laughs> Look, Bilal was praying a unique way and calling the faithful to prayer, and now he's called the Mu'adhan. They went to the Holy Prophet, may peace be upon him, and told him about the, what Bilal was doing. He said, bring him to me. And Bilal taught all of them how to do that. It's true. It is said in Hadith 
that many times if the loud didn't get up for the Fajr prayer, Prophet Muhammad missed it. <laughs> for loud was the time clock. He was the alarm clock. He just naturally had it in his soul. When they retook Mecca and marched on Mecca from four different gates, the Prophet sent Bilal ahead. Not Abu Bakr, not Omar, not Uthman, not uh, uh, Ali, not Hassan, not Hussein, not Khalid. He sent Bilal ahead. He told Bilal to climb on top of the car by himself. And this black man climbed on top of the car. Stood on top of the Kaaba. Right. Over all of them, right. called out to the north, called out to the south, to the east, and to the west. Balaam, yeah. the black man. Because yeah. it's in your nature already. You were born to be righteous, black man. You were born to be righteous, black woman. You are other than righteous by circumstance and consequences, by being under your open enemy who pretends to be a sincere advisor who offers you suggestions in firm resolution. Yeah, right. Said, I will lie and wait for them in thy straight path. Right. So he, is, he said, I will come at them from before them and from behind them. He's going to deal with the history and mess up the history. That's right. That's right. And every time the prophet comes with revelation, he will come behind the prophet to mess up the revelation and confuse the people on what the prophet taught. When it was clear when the prophet came to the people. Come at them from before them and from behind them. I will come at them from the left and I will come at them from the right. He says in the Quran, I will even come after them in al Bustaki. I'll even get right in the straight path and I'll make them deviate in the straight path. Where is the best place for the devil to hide? The best place for the devil to hide is in religion. The best place for the devil to hide is in the church, in the synagogue, in the mosque, in the masjid. The best place for the devil comes up in the doctrine that the people are holding on to be alive. And the devil turns them around in thy straight path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you will do this, he said, I will serve. He said, and the devil said, you will not find most of them worthy. Allah said, go to it. And I will certainly fill hell with you all. The devil said, respite me. Do what? Cut me some slack. Give me a break. Chill for a minute, Allah. Give me six days to do my thing. Give me 6,000 years. Respite me until the day when they are raised. Give me time until the eyes come on. Second Thessalonians said, this day shall not come unless there be a falling away, a separation first, and the man of sin will be revealed. The son of hell that sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is the God, deceiving all of the nations. So the white man, and it says, Satan, God's coming, would not be until after the workings of the devil. The devil would have free reign to do his thing. And then God would show that the devil's power is not strong enough to overcome the earth and subdue the earth and keep it in that state and that condition. And in the twinkling of an eye all woke, that's the way it would appear. He would sweep the devil from power, raise up his people, and they would be the cornerstone of the new world order to be established here on this earth. That's the book. That's all the books. That's the history. You are this people. It's only a devil that has you confused. And now that devil has taken up headquarters in our head. He has put his ideas, his ideals, his philosophy, his doctrine, and his way in our head. So now we are trying to out-devil the devil. The white man is still. The but a devil cannot be a devil when God is present. He is the devil in the person. He has many attributes. Beelzebub, Satan, Shaitan, Lucifer. 99 attributes is 100 attributes is devil. That's the all in all attribute that pulls them all together. It's true. He can't be a devil effectively 
and you are being your God like self. When you are being your God like self, he can't be. The, God, the Holy Quran in the 32nd surah says that Allah will raise up a message, a, a messenger among the people to whom no messenger or warner had ever come before. That's the adoration of Sajda. The 32nd chapter of the Holy Quran. He would raise up a messenger in the midst of a people who had never received the water before. Other ayah says that Allah raises up a water in the midst of all of you. You want me to believe that Allah would give a water and a messenger to everybody? But in bad shape as we're in, we don't get nobody? I can't accept that. Because the book doesn't verify that. The book doesn't bear that up. The messenger in the last day is supposed to come up from among us. I ain't backing down from that with nobody. I'll debate that with anybody. We are the only people on the earth that no messenger, no water has ever come before. Fulfilling the scripture in the 32nd chapter of the Holy Quran. We're the only people who fit that description. description. You say, well, what about this Allah in the person of a man? Let's look at it. Yeah. When you go to Mecca, you say, La Beka Allah Huma La Beka. La Beka Allah Huma La Beka. You're approaching Mecca and you're saying, Here I come, O God. Here I come in thy august presence. Meaning, God is here. <coughs> come on now. If you believe that God can dwell in a house, that his presence is in a house called Kaaba made of bricks and stone. How come you can't believe that he's in a man and in a woman in yourself? How come you can't believe that? Let's look at it. The Hadith says that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and some of the companions or Sahabas were sitting in the tent or by the fire, and a man came up, a mysterious visitor. And he questioned them on certain points of the faith. And when he left, the question was asked, do you know who that man was? Who that one was? Do you know who that man was? And the answer was given, that was the angel Jibril. <laughs> they called Jibril a man. When Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, went up into the cave to get the revelation, and the first revelation came to him, Ikra, Ikra, read in the name of thy Lord. He said that he saw the angel, Jibril. He saw the man, Jibril. He didn't see a spook. He didn't see a spirit. He saw Jibril. We say that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. It's not his message. It's Allah's message. He didn't make this up. He doesn't claim to be this smart. Would you would rather give him the credit than give the credit to Allah? We teach Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah. So he said that this message was given to him by Allah. We don't call Prophet Muhammad the messenger of Jibreel, no, do we? No, but Allah came in the person of Jibreel to give Prophet Muhammad a message. Am I lying to you? He came in the person of Jibreel to give Prophet Muhammad a message, but you don't call him the messenger of Jibreel. You call him the messenger of Allah, but you realize that Allah came in the person of the angel to bless. Allah came in the person of Master Farah. You say, but he looked like a white man. The Bible says he came in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. That he came to his own and his own received him. And he came looking like he would be accepted among the people. The blacker you were in the 1930s, the more rejected you were among black people. Yeah. The lighter your skin, the straighter your hair, the more you could get in with a message to black people. He came to turn one world out of power and to bring in 
a new world order. He, was, he came to establish the axis that would take one out and bring the other one in. So he came in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh, came looking like the enemy, and he could go among the enemies and be well received among his own. But he had a black dad, a jet black, blue black, original dad. Some of you in here are of mixed parents, and you just as black as you can be. And no matter how light you are, you still have the capability and the capacity of producing a blue-black baby. Because you carry the original and the dominant seed. Is that true? Yes, sir. Master Farad Muhammad came from the Holy City back. He's the only one that came to us. He went against all of the scientists. He went against all of them in that area because when the Arabs come to this land, they don't come to black people. That's right. You always go to the white folks. That's right. You pass over the ghetto, That's you right. pass over the reservation, right. and you go to the white folks. Right. He's the only one who took off his holy robes and came and raised up the people here. My last couple of points. You say, well, but it's not the right medicine. What kind of fool are you? If the medicine works, fool, how can it be the wrong medicine? If the medicine is making the people well, how can you call it the wrong medicine? You best get some of that same medicine. The Quran comes from the Arabic root kara'a, which means he gathered together the things. It's a medicine. It's a healing one. Kara'a, Quran, he gathered together the things. Like the bee gathers, gathers from pollen from the different flowers to make honey, a healing balm for man and woman. The Quran is that for us. But the Chinese can't take the medicine the way the Japanese takes it. The Chinese and the Japanese can't take it the way the Arab takes it. The Arab can't take it the same way that somebody else in another part of the earth takes it. The black man and woman in America got to take the medicine according to what's wrong with us. I can't take the medicine according to what's wrong with the Arab. It's a medicine for all of humanity that will take it. But we gotta take it according to what's wrong with us. Nobody's in the shape we You don't know how these people are supposed to be taught. That's right. Only God knew that. That's right. And the Quran says he lays his message on whom he is. And he knows who to lay his message on. I thank you, brothers and sisters, for being as kind and as attentive as you have been. I say that we must begin now to clean ourselves up, prepare for the flood of propaganda, and prepare for the enemy to come against us and make arrests. He comes to arrest the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan is not on trial. When Jesus was arrested, Jesus was not on trial. Blind Bartimus was on trial that Jesus had healed from blindness. The man with the withered head was on trial when Jesus went to trial. The people from the leprosy colony, that's who was on trial. You know leprosy, it's a white-minded disease. <laughs> Lazarus was on trial, who had been dead for four days, which represents the 400 years that we've been in this condition. Jesus was not on trial. Where was Lazarus that day when they took Jesus to court on those trumped up charges? Why didn't Lazarus bust into the courtroom and say, I'm a witness for this good man. I was dead and stinking in the grave for four days and this man took me out of the grave and took my grave clothes off, took the napkin from my eyes. Where was Bartimus to come in the courtroom and say, I was born blind and this man took the scales from my eyes. You call him the devil. But all I know is when I was blind, he made me sick. Jesus fed the multitude. Where were the multitude? Why didn't they bust down the doors of the court, tear the walls down, take the bricks out of the wall, and free Jesus from his captive? But the multitude didn't come in that day. Bartimus didn't have to tap his way with a stick. He could see. Why didn't Bartimus run in and choke the hell out of the church? You can see how he put his hands around his white throat. And Bartimus didn't choke. What about the woman who was sick who fought her way through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment? Huh? These are the announcements for some things I need to tell you about things that are happening this week. I just want you to know what it is. Why didn't, they, why didn't this happen? Peter, they say, took his sword out and cut the soldier's ear off. That's 
not good enough. They come from our time. We want the ear, the head, everything. You got to have it. He's got to have it. She's got to have it. All. Oh. It's not Minister Farrakhan's trial. It's our trial. That's right. He says that he doesn't even want to go to the court. That's right. He said he will fight to stay in his cell because if they arrest him, he says he knows that the court would only be a mockery and that the devil is not fit to try him. He doesn't care how much time it takes. He would rather sit in the jail They locked Yakub up for teaching his teaching. They put him in the jail, and the teachings were spreading all over the streets. And while they had Yakub in the jail, he converted the people in the jail. A movement started in the streets and in the jail. And so the king, who would be the president nowadays, President Bush, we have to come to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as they did Yaku. He said, Assalamu alaikum, Minister Farrakhan. He said, we know who you are. They say, when they found out who Yaku was, they feared Yaku. The Bible said they wanted to take Jesus, but they feared the people. You were so used to Minister Farrakhan performing miracles until many of you will go to sleep like the disciples went to sleep on Jesus. Listen. Jesus went up to Gethsemane to pray in that power, and he came back down, and the disciples were asleep on the watch. They were not walking their post in a perfect manner, keeping always on the alert. They quit their post without being properly Listen. Jesus came back down. The disciples were asleep. The enemies were pressing forward to take him to court and ultimately to kill him. Jesus said, could not you watch with me just this one hour? He went back and came back and they went to sleep again. We've seen the nation of Islam destroyed once before because the watchman went to sleep on the job. You were warned that an enemy would come right up in the house that would turn us around and tear the house down. You were warned of a period of spiritual darkness and the great falling away and the great separation. You were told about these things, but you went to sleep like the disciples of Jesus. You fell asleep on the watch. You did not walk your post in a perfect manner. Keep it always on the alert. So the enemy crept in while men slept, the Bible said, and sowed seeds among the righteous. Then the next thing we knew, the seeds had grown up like right there, like weeds among the righteous, and you couldn't tell. And then all of a sudden, you want to jump up and kill them all and cut them down. Jesus said, no, the weeds look too much like the harvest now. Let it grow for a little while, and then we'll be able to separate the wheat from the tap. Separate the sheep from the goat. But you must not allow anyone to commit a nuisance or a near your coast. No one. You gotta be especially watchful because this is a period of night that is coming upon us. You gotta be especially watchful. The enemy is coming. You don't have to worry about if the enemy is coming. You just have to be concerned about when because the enemy is certainly coming. Farrakhan will not be on trial. We will be on trial. When we fall asleep on the watch, all of them except John was unfaithful to the Lord. How many Johns we got here? Are you no Johns here? John was the only one. Are there any Johns here? Let me see John. She be a whole house for the job. John over here too. Symbolic. I wanted to come in. They come in on the tax. Johnny May. Johnny May and John. This is serious, brothers and sisters. He's already subpoenaed records on Brother Akbar and his wife. Brother, the editor of the Final Call newspaper and his wife. Brother, it was Brother Wali. Uh, Brother Leonard, the 
chief of staff and his wife, the daughter of Minister Farmer. Sister Kaladin, uh, Brother Wazir, the national accountant, and his wife. I think, I think that's it. Brother, I said Brother Akbar first and his wife. Already the grand jury has met on us. But I'm glad to be on the honor roll. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing unless your enemy hates you. The hell you do is your enemy don't hate you. and loved by the righteous and loved by his people. I'm glad my name is on the honor roll. I mean, I would have been worried if my name was on the honor roll. I've been in this country before. Kept me in the hole. Because he didn't want this teaching among the people. I know what it's like. He stripped buck naked. Chains on your ankles, chains around your waist. Big loop with chains with your hands, chained to your waist. They bend you over every way you can imagine and look in every cavity in your body. I know this. Some of you have never experienced it. The enemy is going to come to some of your doors. That's right. Knocking on your door. That's right. Asking you about Minister Wazir. Listen. Asking you about Minister Charles. Right. Asking you about the secretary. That's right. Asking you about the captain. Asking you about sister captain. The enemy is coming to your door. You, what do you know about this one? What do you know about that one? What will you say? She said, nothing. Check the devil. He will preach. That's right. You have no questions to answer from the devil. Don't think you outsmarting the devil. Don't answer any questions. None. Don't break ranks. Don't tell the beast. They're coming, they visited some of you already. They visit you. You should go, sister, to Sister Captain Alice and tell her as soon as they visit you. Go to her and report. You should go to Captain Waleed, Captain Halim, report it right away. Captain Shaheed, Captain Steve. Any more captains? Got some more captains coming. Glad to see you in the so you can't say you ain't got nobody to tell. As soon as they come, you report. Let it be known. They're coming. The FBI. The IRS agents. Some of the some of you here today. That's right. We're happy to have you. You know you're not gonna go back and tell them the part you were skinning and grinning and clapping and pat your feet on. We're here to convert you and get you from the devil. Turn you around. If we can't convert you and turn you around, then we're going to bury you and put you in the ground. You're not going to come here. You're not going to come here and spy on the righteous by the enemy. The stuff you did in the 60s is dead. If we catch you, we're going to kill you.
thank you for being as attentive and kind as you have been. We have what is called a patron ad drive. And this patron ad drive is to help us finish our national headquarters, our national center, which is not our White House, but our Black House. All your seats, all your positions. I wish I could do it like the preacher, lock on the door. Put people on the door with two pistols. Can't do it that way. Lock the door. Close the door. Close that. Close the door, Sister Catherine. We'll be finished in a minute. No, you can leave if you want to. But you go to Patron ads. The patron ad drive. So we can canvas the community, canvas the groundswell of support that the minister has already built up in the name of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. You see, as I was saying earlier, you've seen him you've seen him perform so many miracles until you think, well, Minister Farrakhan can get out of this. As you saw him fill up the board at the sports arena. Most of the Coliseum, D.C., Detroit, and in Chicago, 70,000 came up to see him at Randall's Island in New York, and the thousands that flooded Madison Square Garden, and you saw him on Sunday, Freeman and Ted Koppel and Sam Devilson and all the rest of them. <laughs> Donald Hugh, you, you say, oh, he can get out of this. He's not on trial. Right. So now we need to build up our war chest. Build up our war chest to finish our Black House or our National Center at Mosque Mariam, number two at headquarters, finish our restaurant, bakery complex, and there are certain farmlands and properties that the minister has his eyes on that we want to put him in the position to get them right away. He wants the nation to be debt free, everything paid off straight across the board. Nothing is in his name. All of the properties are in the name legally and binding of the nation of Islam. Right. No family squabbles will ever allow, uh, sees fit for him to close his eyes and into whatever transition. There is no family squabble over the properties like before. He's already taken care of that. The properties are the properties of the nation of Islam, and there is a clause that they are not to be sold by anyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we need you to form a black army to move in the streets of Los Angeles like you did with the signatures for the drive minister to the city, the way you pack the great arenas of Los Angeles, there's nothing here that will hold you now. That's the way we've got to take to the streets to build up our war chest so that we can finish our work. You understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. FOI, that's the fruit of Islam, the sir. building of the black army, the building of character, the building of righteousness, the building of morality building of a sense of manhood, and familyhood, right. and nationhood in the black man. That's right. That's tomorrow night at what time? Seven, be at seven o'clock. At seven o'clock at the corner of Western and 40 Fifth. Where is it? How many black men go try to make Come on. All right, they all get some of them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus of 
scripture, the spirit of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, Nat Turner, Denmark Beasley, Tucson Rover Tours, Desaline the Ferocious, Hannibal, Shaka Zulu, Osajifo Kwame Okuro, the spirit of Malcolm with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the spirit of Martin and all of the greats at the core of their goodness and righteousness. How many of you, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Queen Nzinga, Queen Candace, how many of you, Queen Asante Wap, how many of you believe that that spirit now rests, remains, and abides with the Honorable Minister, the spirit of the honor, most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, how many of you believe that that spirit is with Minister Farrakhan today to complete the work that Francis Douglas and W.E.B. Wall and all of them started the work? Let me see your hands. Do you believe that Minister Farrakhan is the finish of his work? Hands up. You sang the song in the church, were you there? They destroyed the government of Azikwe in Nigeria. Right. They killed Patrice Lumumba and ultimately drove him from power. Yes. Huh? Yes. That turtle was betrayed by his own. The Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey's movement was uprooted and destroyed from within by his own people working with the enemy from the outside. Right. Are we going to let the same thing happen no. to the Honorable no. Minister no. Lewis no. Farrell? No. 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 Black no. men don't want to form a black army. That's what I want to know. Yes. Yes. Stuff where we go get out in the streets throwing hot bean pies at the white man. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that. Which will make you saints, saviors, soldiers, scholars, healers, and killers. What is it? Saints, saviors, soldiers, scholars, healers, and killers. I always talk about children, not soldiers. I know a lot of people get up in front of you and say, I'll die for the call. I'll die for the cause, but you gotta be willing to do some killing for the cause. Yes, yes, yes,
of the greatest trainers of men ever to walk the face of the planet Earth. I'm not exaggerating. Come on. We were all taught by a master military strategist and teacher, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who trained the Supreme Captain at that time, Supreme Captain Raymond Sharif. We trained also Malcolm X's captain and Minister Farrakhan's captain, Captain Yusuf Shah, one of the greatest captains ever to be, the greatest trainers of men ever to be, is Captain Ali Rashid. Now, Imam Ali Rashid, many of us were students of him. Brother Captain Wali has some of the spirit. I have some of the spirit. Even Minister Wazir has some of the spirit. His brother here. Brother Shaw, uh, Khalid Shaw, the captain within his own right, has some of that spirit. Brother Charles Muhammad has some of that spirit. Uh, captain Shaheed has some of that spirit. Uh, Brother uh, Abdul Majid Muhammad there has some of that spirit. Many of us have some of that spirit. I see Brother Doug Moore has some of that spirit. And I'm telling you, tomorrow night, no doubt his top stoop. Yes, sir. It's like when you see him, you see him. Because the father is in the son, yeah. and the son is in the father. Yeah. And this man had a great impact on my life because he was the first lieutenant of Captain Edward Rashid at that time. Right. Now Imam Ali Rashid. And he is with us here today. This is his brother here. As I said, a captain within his own right. The devil took 14 or 15 years of his life in the prison. He didn't go to prison for no foolishness. I ain't got nothing to do with what happened. I don't know nothing about it. I can't give you no facts and information on it, but they charged him with killing white folks. I don't know nothing about it. I wasn't there. The man was under and all that And I'm just saying they just charged him with that. I don't mind being charged with charges like that. But it's easy to say. But it's another thing when you have to go through those trials and tribulations. Be separated from your family. When you have to go through the dungeons of the devil. This man did 14 years. But it's hope this man right here. Charging the sin of the devil. Killing the people. And the sin of the people is killing us. And I'm going to kill you. This senior brother, who trained him, this senior brother who was the right hand, of Captain Rashid. His spirit, Allah has given him his own God-given qualities and talents and uniqueness, but when you see him, it's like seeing Rashid. When you hear him, it's like hearing Rashid. He has the training, he has the experience. He's one of those seasoned veterans, the foremost of the seasoned veterans of many campaigns of war. And he will be with us tomorrow night to address the men at the FOI class. Would you please receive him and give him a black hand Brother, and he's certainly still Captain Naeem Shah. Check it out. 
got a man right there with this cat got a reach for his gun with this strong black Muslim standing there looking at his hand and looking at his gun. And then when Captain Rashid sees his men, he's calling barking orders as he got out of the car. And then he said, who's in charge here? I'm the captain. But he said, he didn't say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. He said, I'm the captain. Who's in charge here? What you cats want? What you want? Come here, arresting us and intimidating us, man. He said, hold your, hold line. Now hold your post. Everybody, cover down on your man. And he stepped to him and talked. When he called the police station down there in Parker Center, he didn't call saying, this is, uh, so they knew him. And when he called, he said, this is a captain. I understand you got two of my men down there coming to kill him. Coming to kill him. He walked in the door, he walked in, he said, I'm coming, he got his bail bonds, he went in, he got his money, he got everything, he said, I came to get my men, man. Turn him loose. That's him. I mean, it was like he could walk through fire. You know <laughs> but that image, that persona, that spirit, that training made men. It made men. This was his right hand, his top stoop. This one he emptied out and poured himself in that. Yes, he did. And we are honored that. Uh, Captain Wali and Captain Halim and Minister Wazir and Minister Charles were invited, they just whispered to me that he invited to come out, and I'm happy and honored that he uh, accepted. I'll be there tomorrow night myself. I'll be there. How many of you say you coming? This is history today. This is history. All right. Sisters. Yes, sir. Let's see if I get over Brothers, no, I don't mind going to this side. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I can. Yes, I'm going to this up here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister was telling me that I can't shake the sister's hand. I am not shaking their hands for myself. I am shaking their hands on behalf of the leader of the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I shake their hand for him in Chicago and receive them for him. He turns them over to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Allah. So don't tell me what I can't do. running all over the place. Right, right. This is a particular right. ceremony. Right. This is a particular right. service right. inviting them yes. into the right. 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 I'm staying with the minister in the palace every day and every night right now. My room is right across the hall from here at the palace. I stand with him when he receives the people on Sunday at Mosque Mariam. So I know what my parameters are. I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed. Believe what you heard to be the truth and good for black people. Let me see your black hands. Let me see it. How many of you believe that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is the embodiment of the spirit of all of the greats who came in the great line of divine and that it is his commission and his mission to complete the work that they started? Let me see your hands. Let me see it. How many of you would like to help us build banks and schools and hospitals and factories and shopping centers and industry and set up our own nation, our own schools to train and teach our own babies so that they will be will not be serviceable tools and foods for the white man. And as we've lost a whole generation during the time that the nation was being rebuilt. We've got to work fast now. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, under the command of Almighty God, wants to see this black woman. A black woman who will purify herself. A black woman who will be in tune with the mind of God, the word of God, and the law of God, and who will produce God from her blessed womb. He wants to see you, black woman, come up really first. Because he says no nation can rise higher than this one. You want to know what the role of the black woman is in the nation?
nation of Islam, we are taught that home is the woman's base, but not necessarily her place. Yeah. That's what we're taught.